أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعذن الله وإياكم من النار My beloved brothers and sisters before I start the khutbah I just want to remind every single one of us of two things from the mistakes that we usually fall into when you come into the masjid and the mu'adhin is making the adhan for Salatul Jumu'ah. That person stands and he waits for the adhan to finish. Rather, this is an opportunity for a person to pray the raka'atayn, the two sunnahs, before they sit down. Because a person should not sit down until they pray these two sunnahs. Rather, a person should not even wait because they want to catch the time when the khatib stands up to deliver the khutbah, to benefit from the reminder of the khutbah. So this is a reminder that when you come into the masjid, quickly pray your two sunnahs and sit down and listen to the khutbah. And bil munasab, and also on when it comes to listening to the khutbah, the messenger alayhi salatu was salam, he said, whomsoever says to his brother or his sister, when the khutbah is going on, that keep quiet, the imam is talking. The one who says that to the person who's sitting next to them, then that person has spoken, has jested in the, in the khutbah. He has lost out the reward of the khutbah. So if this is the state of that person who advises the other person, what about the person who busies themselves on a mobile phone, speaking to someone, texting and so forth? That person has no reward for the khutbah. However, how far you came from, you have no reward in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's something that person has to bear in mind. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal, he says in his noble book, which revealed to us the Ummah of the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam, يقلب الله الليل والنهار إن في ذلك لعبرة لأول الأبصار الله عز وجل he alternates the day and the night in that is a lesson for the one who has vision the one who has insight the one who is awake you look outside the weather the season has changed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he shows us from the athad rahmatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala from the signs of his mercy you look at the beauty of what is outside and the person becomes happy person becomes relaxed lakin for the believer or any other person out there they ask themselves ma hiya ajmalu shay'in fi dunya what is the most beautiful thing the most pleasant thing in this worldly life this is a question that most of us ask ourselves. What is the, most, the best experience, the, be the most beautiful thing that you're going to have in your worldly life? Some of us, we look at our children, our wives. You look at your family that you have around you. That every single person, the most important objective is perhaps to get married. They spend the whole entire lifetime studying and earning wealth searching for that beautiful beautiful spouse the beautiful wife they want to marry and the woman does the same thing a handsome husband that she can walk around with and show everyone how beautiful how handsome he looks and similarly for the man 
The children that you have around you, you feel privileged that you're called Abu Fulan, you're called Umm Fulan. This is what gives you that prestige and honor in front of the people. That you spend your entire lifetime sacrificing your life in order for them to be happy. You come back from work, you want to look at them because that gives you serenity and relaxation. That gives you happiness. You sacrifice everything because why? This is the most beautiful thing that you want, that you want to attain. Or oh, that's the most beautiful thing that you have in this world. You sacrifice your health, your wealth for them. But then you find someone else who says, Qad hadha. He says, no, this is not the most beautiful thing in this world of life. That he sees his family members, his wife, his children, that they are sababur ra'isiyya. They are the most they are the people that have caused them a lot of grief and hatred and anxiety and stress. The reason why he does not come to the salah is because his wife wakes him up, go and work. We have to be, you have to live the best of lifestyles. The reason why he takes a riba haram to buy a mortgage, because why he wants to provide for his family members. The reason why he does not attend the durus in a masjid. Lessons to learn about his religion because he wants to spend time with his family members. The reason why he does not do the obligation, the salah, he cannot wake up for Salat al Fajr to come to the masjid because he wants to enjoy the company with his wife in his bed. As a result of that, this person has lost out on that uns, that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason why he has cut off the ties of kinship with his, with his family members, because his wife cannot allow him to go and visit his mom or his father. The reason why the sister has stopped wearing a hijab, because the husband cannot tolerate for her to go out in the open space, wearing as a Muslimah. The reason why, why and why and why, is because of these things. Because of your own family members. So on one side, the other person, he, look at the, he looks at these individuals as a source of happiness. On the other side, the other person, he looks at them as a source of misery for them. And even if someone was to come and say, my brother, everything that you're talking about, I've not experienced that. I've only experienced good and happiness in my family. We say to that person, this is a ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And it is befitting that you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that blessing. But remember... That even with that blessing, you're going to taste a portion of grief and anxiety. When is that going to happen? When they depart from this world. Because this death does not know rich, old, happy or wretched. When it comes death and it splits between you and your beloved ones. They say that death is the reason of grief and sorrow between family members. That you come back to your home, you call out, no one answers you except the walls that you have in your home. Subhanallah. You come back as one of the sha'ir, he said, You come back to your home. Don't ask, there's no one there, you're not going to find anyone. Take the keys and open, there's no one in the house. Because they have returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of these incidents have we heard? A family that was together, Allah azza wa jalla brought death that separated between them. This, my beloved brothers, it paints you the picture that maybe family and your children and your wife and your husband لَيْسَ مِنْ أَجْمَلِ شَيْءٍ فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا It is not from the most beautiful things in this world in life. So the question is, what is the most beautiful thing that a person can experience in this world in life? A person will say to you, المال وَمَا أَدَرَاكُمْ المال Wealth. That thing that gives you prestige, that gives you honor. How many people have been elevated in status because of wealth? He was poor yesterday and Allah gave him wealth. And he became from those who are elite. How many people have covered up their faults and the oppression because of their wealth? Because wealth buys what? 
by his protection this day and age that the people most of every single one of us we are thinking about what is in your pocket you want to hang around with someone who has a lot of wealth the poor doesn't know any position in society with the people and this is what the wealth that you sacrifice your entire life you go to universities you go to any type of institution in order for you to acquire wealth to gain it to have most of it in order for you to buy happiness but then the person someone comes and he says no wealth has not caused anything but misery how many family members do you know they say to you wallahi when we didn't have wealth we were the most happiest of people as soon as wealth was given to us we are the most unhappiest of people the wife comes in the husband goes out the children come in the husband the parents go out no one sees no one this is the life that they're living and it's adab punishment after punishment that they say we wish we were to go back to that time when we didn't have nothing that you find the most simplest of people who don't have perhaps it has a meal in the morning it doesn't have anything to eat in the day they are the most happiest of people on the face of the earth so you find that this person he found happiness in wealth that the other person says la wealth has caused nothing except but what misery and problems it's taken from you in one lahza, in one moment when you return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of that wealth leaves you subhanallah and when you are resurrected Qiyamah, you're going to ask you're going to be asked about every single penny that you had to extend that a person is going to say Ma aghna anni maliya. my wealth has not benefited me in the least whatever i've piled up has become a reason of my demise a reason of my problems so if my beloved brothers if wealth is not the most beautiful thing that is going to give you happiness and contentment in this world what is it sual person comes and he says forget wealth good health good health that i can walk i can look at the out you know can look outside and enjoy the beautiful weather i can see everyone with my eyes i can eat what i want up until one of them says, Wallahi by Allah, Walau kana jam'ul mal tu'ajibuni. Even if gathering wealth and having wealth is something that makes me become amazed, it's something that I love. Lakin, wealth cannot, clo come, cannot come close to good health. Wealth cannot come close to good health. Because why? When you are healthy, you are able to enjoy your wealth. When you are healthy, everything else does not matter. But then a person comes and he says, but even with health, it does not last for long. Today you're healthy, tomorrow you're on a sick bed. And these are examples that we hear from within ourselves, from people around us, how many people woke up. The one who was healthy, he woke up and he was the most illest of people. They've just given him days. How many people had the good health? And they have been told you cannot eat a certain type of food. Even those who are healthy, they have to eat certain types of food. They stay away from eating sugar. They stay away from eating a lot of this and a lot of that. Even when they're healthy. Why? Because out of fear that this health is going to be compromised. Subhanallah. You find that a person for the entire years. I was walking in Milton Keynes and I saw a poster of someone who said for the last 20 years I've not lived in anything but pain. Subhanallah. That this individual, all they know is what pain in the health. That that individual, they cannot even taste the sweetness of sleep. They cannot even close their eyes. They have to take medication. Even medication does not work. They cannot sleep for years and years. So my beloved brothers, the question comes back. Ma hiya ajmalu shay'in fi dunya. What is the most beautiful thing, the most precious of things in this world of life? If all of that is not in these things that we've mentioned, 
If all of the beauty and the most pleasant thing is not in your children, your wife, your health, and your wealth, what is it? هذا سنعرفه في الخطبة الثانية أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداع إلى جنته ورضوانه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السؤال the question that is going to give us راحة البال relaxation in our minds ما هي أجمل شيء في الدنيا what is the most beautiful thing the most pleasant the most fulfilling thing in this world in life that every single one of us should be searching for that you are not able to get it from your own closest spouse to you. The most beloved creations to you, your children, those whom you will do everything for their livelihood. That you are not able to get from the wealth that you are gathering day and night. That you work in the day you are like a donkey, working tirelessly. And in the night you sleep like a dead animal, subhanallah. That person does not have any portion of the night to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, Inna Allah yaghdab. Allah azza wa jalla, he becomes upset. Allah azza wa jalla, he's upset at a person. He is the most loudest during the day. And when he comes to the night, he is like kaljifa, he's like a dead body. And in the night, in the day, he is kalhimar, he's like a donkey. Working his backside off, tiring himself out. He doesn't know anything of the dunya. Alimun bil umur al dunya, jahilun bil umur al akhirah. So if your wealth is not able to give you that, and even your health is not something which is everlasting, what is the most fulfilling thing that you're going to attain this world in life? Ya ikhwan, Allah subhanahu wa taala, He says to us in the Quran. ألف لام ميم أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Do people think that they're going to be left to say we believe? We're not going to be. They're not going to be tested. ولا قد فتن الذين من قبلهم. We have tested those that came before them, and we have seen those who were truthful in their faith and those who were just lip servicing. Those who were not truthful when it comes to their faith. The most beautiful thing that you have in this world, my beloved brothers and sisters, is رِضَى بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ To be pleased with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. To be pleased with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for you. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بِحِكْمَتِهِ الْبَالِغَةِ With His infinite wisdom has decreed that all of these things are never going to be everlasting. Good health. Wealth, children, wife, husband, they're not going to be over everlasting. When a person understands that, and they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hakeemun, he's most wise, and he knows that which is more befitting, that which is befitting for you, oh, the slave of Allah, you become pleased with that which he has decreed for you. You are happy. The Messenger alayhi salatu was salam, he said to the companions on the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, he said to them, who is going to take these words from me and is going to teach the people of them and is going to act upon it themselves? So Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, he said, ana ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, me. So the Prophet sallam, he said, Abu Hurairah, he said, the Prophet sallam, he counted five and he said, ittaqi maharim illah. Stay away from the things which Allah has prohibited you from doing. You will be from the best of servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرُضَ بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكَ And be pleased with that which Allah Azza wa Jalla has decreed for you. That which Allah has given you. تَكُنْ أَغْنَ nas. You will be from the richest of people. You will be from the most content of people. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, 
ليس الغنى عن كثرة العرض ليس الغنى richness is not piling up a lot of possessions with you لكن الغنى غنى القلب rather richness and satisfaction is come from the heart if your heart is content and you're pleased you will be from the most happiest of people wallahi wallahi alladhi la ilaha ghayru if a person if we understood this concept we will be the most we will be the less miserable people on the face of this earth that a person understands that when i lose my beloved person to me my wife my children this is a means of me increasing in ajr in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of my patience allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inma yuwaffa as-sabirun ajrahum bi ghayri hisab those who are patient allah has given them a reward which has no account when i'm stricken with poverty it is a means of being protected from at-tughyan from being some from those who are transgressful and from being from those who follow their desires because when you have a lot of wealth you engage in things which is going to please your shahawat, your desires. So when you don't have wealth, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that which is befitting for you. He Himself, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, There are people from my slaves. I know that if I had given them wealth, they would have transgressed. And that would have been a means of their destruction. And there's people from my, from my creation whom I've given a lot of wealth. Because if I had not given them wealth, that would have been a means of their destruction. Allah Azza wa Jal, He's the one who knows. And He's the one who has more mercy, more mercy towards you than your own parents. Than your own mother. Because He loves that you are from those who are going to worship Him. And you're going to be from those who are admitted into Jannah. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deprives you of a child... You don't go around having to go to people to what? To beg them to go to the graves or to even go to the magicians or to even speak about your own in-laws and say this person is the one who's which you know is playing is doing magic on me that cannot have a child. You hear all of these ibarat, all of these statements. That person for the last 20 years since they've been married, Allah's not given them a child. And they start to blame everyone else. But they don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has their best interests at heart. When your children are giving you a hard time, this is an opportunity for you to make dua, to raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua for them and supplicate for them. So a person, my beloved brothers, the believer, he looks at the affairs completely different. عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ mu'min. The affairs of the believer are completely strange. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْنٍ all of his affairs are good for him. In asabatu dara, sabr. When difficulty touches them, he is patient, or she is patient. When good comes to him or her, shakar, they are grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. My beloved brothers and sisters, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah Taala, he said, "Al bab al rida bima qasam Allahu lak." This door of being pleased with that which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you. It is from the greatest of gates with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a means of bringing relaxation to those who know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a means of giving you that relaxation of tama'anila. That when you are, don't, when you are not pleased with, what, with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, you're always going to be gathering. You're always going to be discontent. You're never going to be content. Because this world, my beloved brothers, many of those that came, they had most of it. The wealth, the health, the wives, the children, the husbands, you name them. But they left it all behind. No one leaves this world when they cling onto this world except that they want to get more and more of it. But the believer is the one who is always relaxed within himself. He knows that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, this is good for me. So my beloved brothers and sisters, my message for every single one of you today and to myself is Be pleased with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You will be from the richest of people. This is ajmalu shay'in fi dunya. This is the most beautiful thing that you're going to have in this worldly life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are content with that which He gives us. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for our shortcomings. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Zakiha anta khayru man zakaha. Anta waliyuha mawlaha. Allahumma ansur ikhwana al-mustadha'afina fi ghazah. Allahumma ansuruhum ala aduwika wa aduwihim ya dhal jalali wal ikram. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحانك اللهم بحمدك شل لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك أتوب إليك